It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It <clears throat> is a Monster Monday presented by DraftKings. I have like a frog in my throat or something. Hold on one second. <laughs> Let me get a sip of water. <clears throat> Man, all I know is this. I feel much better after that sip of water, number one. Number two, if this is your first episode or first time listening or watching, I promise it usually starts better than this. <laughs> please, please listen or watch the rest. Uh, <clears throat> we are presented by DraftKings, of course. Uh, we will have a new Spread the Word winner via social media this week. Probably tell you tomorrow uh, about all the press passes I have because I've got so many awesome press passes and a lot more good ones coming up. The cool thing about the press passes is nobody else has them. Like, none of your buddies have them. Nobody else has ever seen one, what it really looks like. For a guy that gets to do the game on TV, personally signed to you. And all you have to do is spread the word via social media. At Ross Tucker NFL. At Ross Tucker Pod. On Twitter or Instagram or Facebook. We love the shares and the quote tweets. And then the sponsor confirmation email winner. Take advantage of any of our sponsors ever. And just send me the email. Ross at Ross Tucker.com. And of course... Love, love, love doing the cameo style YouTube shout out videos. Did one yesterday that you guys can check out youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Still getting patrons, by the way. Shout out to Troy Olson. Love that we are still getting patrons and love the big show. The big show. All right, as we always do, before we get into all these games individually, let's talk about overall, the overall themes, anything that you saw that stood out from week 16 in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, certainly, Bri, one of them is just the sheer amount of impact that the COVID list is having on these games and these teams. I mean, some of the guys that did not play yesterday, Travis Kelsey, for the Chiefs, they still won by a lot. But the team that really got hurt the most by it yesterday, the L.A. Chargers. No Austin Eckler. No Mike Williams. No Joey Bosa. And they lost to the Texans, I think, as a result. Then you have Dalvin Cook for the Vikings didn't play. No starting quarterback for the Lions, Jared Goff. They probably would have won that game with him. No starting quarterback for the Ravens. Tyler Huntley, now their defense was so bad, who knows, but would have been a more competitive game. And then Brandon Cooks didn't play for the Texans, Cole Beasley for the Bills, Gabriel Davis for the Bills. By the way, Bills still won. Shout out Isaiah McKenzie. Andrew Whitworth for the Rams, Ramondre Stevenson for the Patriots, Josh Allen for the Jags, LaVisca Chanel, Akeem Hicks for the Bears, Harrison Butker, so... It was just that kind of day, man. It continues to be a huge, huge, and have a huge impact on the NFL season. That was a big one. Um, Other big ones, Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, simply incredible, both of them. I mean, Burrow out here like setting records. Josh Allen made so many clutch Incredible plays. So impressive. That was one of my themes. Um, Snow games being awesome is another theme. That Cleveland, I mean, uh, Chicago, Seattle game. I don't know what it is. It just looks beautiful. When you watch a snow game, it just looks beautiful. A lot of teams are clinching stuff. Bucks, NFC South, Cowboys, NFC East. Rams playoff spot, Arizona playoff spot. That's another theme. Then you've got big man touchdowns. Uh, McDermott for the Jets. Lane Johnson for the Eagles. 
Terrence Steele for the Cowboys. And Will Richardson recovering that fumble for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then finally, if you didn't see it yet, you have to check out my Twitter, at Ross Tucker NFL, because Bill Belichick was asked after the game about his New Year's resolutions, and it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I don't want to I don't want to give it away. Go to at Ross Tucker NFL and check it out. But it is awesome. You know what's not awesome? When the dashboard lights come up in your car. Oh, such a bad feeling. Thankfully, with the free fix finder service at AutoZone, you can troubleshoot more dashboard lights, including your check engine light, ABS light, and service interval light. The free fix finder will give you possible solutions for your lights, all backed by verified technicians. It'll even send you your full results in a detailed fix finder report. Straight to your email. If you need a bit of help from a repair shop, AutoZone will even refer you to a nearby shop that you can trust. It's the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes. And you can only find it at AutoZone. So the next time your dashboard lights pay you a visit, just get in the zone. AutoZone. Tucks takes. All right, let's start with uh, the two games on Saturday. And the first one being Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Aaron Rodgers passed Brett Favre's Packers touchdown record. Green Bay over Cleveland, 24-22. Yeah, I mean, the Browns ran the ball great. But for some reason, in my opinion at least, didn't do enough of it. Didn't do enough of it. Baker Mayfield uh, had four interceptions. Could have easily been more. If he plays even average or just has one or two less interceptions, the Browns win a huge game. Huge. Aaron Rodgers' toe was clearly bothering him, but he was still clutch when he needed to be, including three touchdowns, two of which went to Devontae Adams, who is like, Inevitable in the red zone. It's amazing. So I will say this. Questionable non-call on Rasul Douglas late in that game. Should have been a hold or a pass interference. But as I've consistently said, I'd rather them let them play uh, than call something that's not there. But they should have called that. But if they're going to err, err on the side of letting them play. And by the way, they should have had like two other interceptions on that drive anyway. Tux takes. Indianapolis Colts winners of six of their last seven games beat the Cardinals on Saturday, 22-16. Colts were down three offensive linemen at the start of this game with COVID. Ryan Kelly, both guards, center and both guards. Then Eric Fisher got hurt in the second quarter. They still won. What a great win for the Colts and a terrible loss for the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, John the Taylor had a huge run to start the game to get a touchdown for the Colts. But other than that, Cardinals actually did a decent job. He had two big runs, so his numbers looked good. But it was really just a couple of big runs. Kyler Murray had his own incredible long run, which led to a touchdown, but they missed the extra point, which was really a theme of the game. Prater killed the Cardinals in this game. You know, they missed extra point, they missed field goals. Prater really hurt them. Kyler actually had an incredible effort to save a touchdown, uh, to save a, a losing a touchdown, and actually almost... Almost didn't get a safety on a bad snap. I loved the fake punt return. Uh, Byron Murphy, that was amazing. Led to a Kyler Murray touchdown. And Cardinals had the lead. But Carson Wentz, 
who missed too many throws during the game, made some clutch ones when he had to, including a touchdown in the back of the end zone to Desmond Patton. Patman, one of the best, one of the best throws of the weekend, and the Colts get a huge win. Tux takes. Philadelphia Eagles improved to eight and seven following their 34-10 win over the Giants. They'll need a lot of help, but Philly can clinch a playoff spot next week. Yeah, I don't know if I envision that happening, but it is possible. They were sluggish early. They were not running the ball as effectively as they had been, or as much. And I think the Giants defense deserves a lot of credit. Pretty impressive effort, I would say, by them. There were some missed throws by Jalen Hurts. There were some drops by like Rager, Miles Sanders, Goddard. Some penalties hurt the Eagles offense. But ultimately, it was the Giants' inept offense that got the Eagles going. McLeod got an interception, which led to a Boston Scott touchdown. Watkins and Devontae Smith made huge plays downfield for the Eagles. And, and Devontae made one on the sideline as well. Now, Miles Sanders did break his hand, reportedly. So that's something to watch. I mentioned the big man touchdown for Lane. Uh, McLeod got his hand on another ball, which led to the Alex Singleton pick six. Uh, too many penalties for the Eagles. I got to say this, though. For Giants fans, wow. That is a very, very hard team to watch. And firing J... Uh, Jason Garrett did not help at all. Tux takes. Rams defeat the Minnesota Vikings 30-23. They clinch a playoff berth for the fourth time in the last five seasons. Boy, Matthew Stafford even said after the game, he did not play great. I mean, he had three interceptions. Not good. And that really kept the Vikings in it. But ultimately, they ran the ball pretty well. Sonny Michelle. That was a good trade by the Rams. Cooper Cup had a big day. He always does. The Brandon Powell punt return touchdown was huge. And they got just enough Aaron Donald defense in another dominant effort. Justin Jefferson had a nice day. Seems like he always does too for the Vikings. But that was about it. Tux takes. Josh Allen became the first player with at least 100 touchdown passes and 20 rushing touchdowns in his first four seasons in the NFL. Um, Bills over the Patriots, 33-21. He has the highest ceiling of any quarterback in the NFL. When he's hot, he is incredible to watch. I mean, he's a really good runner. As a passer... He has some throws that are just ridiculous. You know, no Cole Beasley might have helped the Bills because Isaiah McKenzie stepped up in a major way, played awesome. The Bills didn't punt all game. The Patriots actually ran it pretty well with Damian Harris, but Mac Jones had a bad day. I mean, Josh Allen was by far the best quarterback on the field in that game, clearly. Tux takes. Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeat the Carolina Panthers 32 to 6. And in doing so, they clinch the NFC South division title for the first time since 2007. That's incredible. I, I was shocked when I heard that. I, I was very surprised. The Panthers rotating quarterbacks seems pretty stupid to me. Doesn't seem like it's working. They were sacked seven times and scored six points. I don't know what they're accomplishing there. Antonio Brown proved why even though he is a uh, interesting guy is the best way I can describe him. He had a big game and he showed why they didn't cut him even though he had a fake vaccination card. Keyshawn Vaughn had a big time touchdown run, probably earned himself some more playing time. And on defense, Jordan Whitehead, I called his state championship game for Central Valley. He was everywhere. He was absolutely everywhere. Tux takes. Despite 20 players and their head coach on the COVID list, the Jets beat the Jags 26-21. Gutsy win. 
Uh, very unfortunate news that James Robinson tore his Achilles for the Jags. That's brutal. And the Jags at the end of the game, I mean, what are you doing? Why are you spiking the ball on third down? You make a quick throw into the end zone. You don't spike it on third down there. And then on fourth down, they get a motion penalty? Horrible. Horrible ending to that game for Jacksonville. And I got to tell you, Trevor Lawrence is okay. But he's really just not as good as I thought he'd be. I mean, that, and, and maybe he'll be better. But I was disappointed in him again yesterday. Zach Wilson wasn't perfect, but he had a great running touchdown. Had some clutch throws. Michael Carter had a big game, a rookie running back. The, the Jets at least have some hope. You know, they, they can see the sun over the horizon. Tux takes. A last-minute interception preserves the Falcons' 20-16 win over the Lions. And they are still in the mix. If you would have told me the Falcons would still be in the mix going into Week 16, it's pretty impressive. But they're right there at 7-8. and eight. Matt Ryan was solid. He has shown his value to me and then some this year. Even with Cordero Patterson doing very little by way of running the ball. He did have a touchdown. Kyle Pitts had a big day. He might set the all-time record for rookie tight ends, which is cool. Speaking of rookies, Amon Ra St. Brown is the real deal. I said he would be. He's just mentally and physically tough. Reminds me of Heinz Ward. Even without golf, Amon Ra had another big day. Tux takes. You know who else had a big day? Rex Burkhead. He ran for a career high 149 yards and two touchdowns for the Texans as they upset the Chargers 41 29. Yeah, I mean, the Chargers run defense is horrible. I don't know how you lose that game. That, look, Davis Mills. We're to the point now where, based on how these last two games go, we might feel best about Davis Mills. Think about that. Depending on how these two games go, we might feel best out of the rookie quarterbacks about Davis Mills. I mentioned the Chargers were COVID-ravaged. Justin Jackson did have a nice day with Eckler out. But listen, Texans didn't have Brandon Cooks either. So... I, you know what? I think that it's a very real possibility that Texans would have won anyway. They ran the ball great. Very impressive. Tux takes. Joe Burrow threw for a franchise record 525 yards and four touchdowns in the Bengals' 41-21 win over the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible, obviously, Bry. So that's why... Without any hesitation, he is our in the zone player of the week presented by AutoZone. I mean, you look at the way he performed, and I know John Harbaugh wasn't happy that the Bengals were still throwing it late. You can't say that. I mean, especially with John Harbaugh trying to keep that rushing streak alive when they could have just taken a knee at times. You can't complain about that. I mean, Burrow was unstopped. Four touchdowns, 525 yards. He was in the zone all game. And I will say this, the Ravens let him be in the zone. They didn't do a very good job of covering guys. I mean, Tyler Boyd, nobody even co covered him in the slot. He just went right down the field, no problem. But then you had T. Higgins with the contested catch. Jamar Chase, Burrow even hit, Joe Mixon on the out and up. The skill position players for the Bengals are incredible. I mean, both Higgins and Chase are over 1,000 receiving yards now. No wonder Joe Burrow was in the zone. Um, you know, for the Ravens, Anthony Averitt gets hurt. He's like their fifth corner that can't play. They got guys playing now that weren't even on the team two weeks ago. It's brutal. And then you got Josh Johnson. Who I thought was actually okay. I thought Josh Johnson was okay at quarterback, but certainly not in the zone 
presented by AutoZone like Joe Burrow was. Tux takes. Nick Foles got the start for the Bears yesterday. Leads uh, led Chicago to a 25-24 win over the Seahawks. By the way, it's the first time that Pete Carroll has lost 10 games in a season as a head coach in Seattle. What a win for the Bears and Matt Nagy. I think there's a lot of people that thought Nagy might get fired today if they lost because for the first time ever, you're actually allowed to talk to um, assistant coaches and interview them, but you have to have a vacant position. So it's kind of wild to think about it that Nagy might have prevented the Bears from being able to interview other head coaches, other guys for coaching candidates with people expecting him to be let go. The snow was awesome. DK Metcalf finally making a big play was awesome. But for the Bears, man, uh, David Montgomery's a beast. And how about the clutch throws and great catches by Foles late? To Jimmy Graham, who doesn't even have to jump for the ball. Demir Bird with... I thought the catch of the day on the two-point conversion. You know, the bright side for the Seahawks is they're running the ball better. Rashad Penny, just in time to be a free agent and go somewhere else, is running the ball better. Uh, but brutal loss for the Seahawks, although I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. Although they don't even have their first-round pick. So uh, it it makes it even worse. They're not even getting the first-round pick out of it. Tux takes. Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Pittsburgh Steelers 36-10, to and in combination with the Chargers' loss, uh, they clinched their sixth consecutive AFC West title. That is so impressive. I mean, to win six division titles in a row, incredibly impressive. Two different quarterbacks. Uh, Tyree Kill was able to get back. No Kelsey or Bolton. Edwards Elaire and Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew, both got hurt. Although, before he got hurt, Edwards Elaire had an unbelievable angry run that my boy Kyle Brandt might feature. Chiefs had three takeaways in the game, which were huge. Pringle was making plays. Derek Core, Derek Gore, McCole Hardman. Um, Steelers, that was just a sad performance by them. A sad, bad performance for them. Kind of a sad ending for Ben Roethlisberger if this is sort of how he goes out. Tux takes. The Las Vegas Raiders turned the ball over three times but still found a way to beat the Broncos 17-13. to Yeah, and you were there, Bri. I was. Just got home about, uh, about three hours ago. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. It's been a long night. But, uh, tell me, tell me, there. tell me, tell, tell, tell the people your flight arrangements. Uh, seven o'clock flight from Las Vegas back to New Orleans nonstop. I'm thinking, great. Land at uh, midnight, about an hour drive. I'll be home between one, one fifteen. Yeah, and then there was two and a half hour delay, so that put me in at about four. Oh, Bry. Yeah. As usual, Bry is the star of this show. The guy behind the scenes, tough as nails. Love it. Let me just say this, by the way. I'm getting too old for this. That's what. <laughs> yeah. let, let me just say this: in life, okay, mental toughness is really important. When you're picking your partners, whether it's business or your spouse, mental toughness is as important a trait as any. And Brian is very mentally tough. My wife is very mentally tough. It matters, like. You suck it up. We, now, will you get a chance to take a nap today, Brian? Will you go back to bed? Uh, yeah, in about six minutes, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's true. Um, how is the food? Uh, you talk about mental toughness. We're, we're going with the, uh, the food crew at, uh, at Allegiant Stadium. They went breakfast again with the tofu slash impossible burrito um which i did not partake they did have denver omelet burritos which was uh, egg cheese ham and uh green pepper which i did have which was very good uh eggnog french toast did not partake since i kind of overdid it on 
Christmas Day. Um, halftime chicken pot pie, shepherd pie, salad, uh, roasted vegetables, plus uh, all throughout the day, tons of Christmas themed cookies, brownies, and cakes, as well as the normal assortment of candy. Just stellar. Bry, I love both chicken pot pie and shepherd's pie. I am so glad you just brought those up. I haven't thought about them in months, if not years. I need to get me a good chicken pot pie or a shepherd's pie. The, my mom used to make those for me. Those were my favorites. Oh, I love both. Of, are those both like British dishes? I, or Irish, maybe. I think uh, they might be Irish. One of them was Scottish, I thought. But I, what? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Man, I would eat the crap out of some shepherd's pie and chicken pot pie. Eggnog French toast sounds very interesting. My mother-in-law, Rachel, made unbelievable Christmas spread. I posted it on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Check it out. At Ross Tucker NFL. Um, the turkey was so good. My wife actually made the filling. Her late grandmother's recipe. Shout out to my wife. Everything else she's got going on in life. She still keeps the tradition alive by making um, her late grandmother's filling. Those are both delicious. The uh, gravy was amazing. Baked corn. The baked corn was actually very nice. Loved it. And then she makes like this Oreo dessert. So good. You know, it wasn't good. All the turnovers that were killing the Raiders. You had the Jacobs missed pitch, the Chubb interception in the first half, which led to the Javante Williams touchdown. Credit, by the way, to the Raiders. Even with all those turnovers, you know what? They still won. Josh Jacobs, best game of the season. O-line did a pretty nice job run blocking. The Broncos actually, for the first time in a while, they couldn't run the ball at all. I mean, Lock, Drew Locke was up and down. He always is. And Derek Carr did a really nice job throwing the ball downfield and against the Blitz. Tux takes. And finally, Sunday night football. Not a good night for the Washington football team. Cowboys win it 56 to 14. Their 42 first half points tie, ties a Dallas franchise record. Yeah, I mean, just ridiculous. Trayvon Diggs with the uh, interception on, I think, Washington football team's first play. That led to a Zeke touchdown. Demarcus Lawrence had a freak pick six. They had a blocked punt for a touchdown. In the first half, Dak threw touchdowns to a wide receiver, a tight end, a running back, and an offensive lineman. The Washington football team had a fight on the sideline between Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, and look, that doesn't bother me at all. Stuff happens. You, you have, you have, those guys are like brothers. They love each other. They're frustrated. You get in fights sometimes. I got in a bunch of fights with teammates. Usually, a guy on the other side of the ball in practice, but I've seen that. I almost got in a fight with the guy next to me once. I don't you, you don't see it very often in games, but it doesn't bother me all that much at all. Shout outs are in order, however. Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, humanheadnyc.com, and steakhouse sports.com. College draft podcast already posted. Power rankings tomorrow, even money. Tomorrow, I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 